Zhang Ping started in 1993, and it's currently the fourth largest pork supplier in China. Having said that, however, you must understand that the top five pork producers in China occupy less than 10% of their market. So there's a huge, huge market out there for pork. It's fragmented between wet and dry markets. I'm not sure I want to know exactly where the derivation of the wet and dry come from. Needless to say, the modern supermarket is characterized as a dry market, and the traditional markets that China Chinese people buy their meat products from are characterized as wet markets. Uh, you can also characterize the markets as chilled and room temperature. And most of the pork that's sold in China today is still being sold at room temperature in wet markets. Uh, just to give you an idea of the potential for the growth in these products in China right here, uh, we can look that that uh, the Chinese government by 2015 has mandated that the more than 21,000 slaughterhouses in China will have to be reduced to fewer than 3,000. In other words, the big players are going to be the ones that win out in the long run. By 2015, the government has mandated that the sales of chilled pork products will go from 10% of the market to 30% of the market. Well, this is right up Jean Ping's alley here, chilled pork products. By 2015, the Chinese government has mandated that the there that less than 50 percent of the total pork supply will be in room temperature pork. Right now, again, that number is up around 80 percent. By 2015, the government wants less than 50 percent to be at room temperature uh, for sales. And Zhang Ping has decided that it will do what it's going to do by distributing to 20 different provinces in China, plus some of the major cities. If you look at the map of China, and most of us don't know that much about the geography of China, you'll notice that the uh, country is is very vast. It's it's extremely wide, like the United States, and there are a lot of larger provinces off to the west. Uh, Zhang Pin is going to focus on the smaller provinces along the Pacific Ocean, uh, to the north, to the south in the mid part of the country, and then they're going to go to what they call the near west in the Sichuan province. Notice that the uh, there's some stars and there's some uh, circles on this map. Those are major centers right now where Zhang Pin is doing the processing of pork products. And the circles represent what they feel the market uh, can, the, the size of the market can be based on the production capabilities they have in those geographic areas. If you're interested in the proportion of sales by division, uh, just over half of what they sell is chilled pork. Uh, about 15% is prepared. About a quarter is frozen. And there's about 2% that goes into fruits and vegetables. Here's the slide in a pie chart. There's also the numbers for that slide uh, beneath the pie charts. 1H means the first half uh, of both those fiscal years. Uh, if you're looking about how they sell these products, about 41% of the product is sold through normal retail chains. About 31% is sold through wholesalers and distributors, and 28% of it goes to restaurants and food services that then cook it and send it on to the consumer. There's a very small export business to uh, Zhang Pin, not enough to even worry about. And Zhang Pin makes it very clear that their business will be in China for many years to come, that they don't have any desire to do significant exporting outside of the country of China. Uh, they also provided me on their website with this diagram that shows uh, the hog production going from the supply 
that would be the breeders of the hogs all the way through to the cold chain logistics, the sales channels. Zhang Pin is making a real effort not only to deal with the food, but to also set up information systems, management information systems, to support and manage the flow of the product as it moves through this process from supply to slaughtering to processing and finally to sales. You know that we've been experimenting in the round table here uh, and in mid-Michigan, in fact, with some of these technical uh, indicators. And you know how skeptical that I've been of, of technical indicators. Well, uh, I've included an RSI graph, a relative strength graph, just for those of you that, that would ask me, what's the relative strength look like? But uh, I remain as skeptical as I've ever been uh, about some of these graphs. Uh, I notice, for example, that, that it's a, the RSI graph is supposed to indicate a cell signal above 80 and a buy below 20. And I'm looking at, at the RSI hitting 80 over here, and I'm looking at, at a cell. And, you know, I don't know if I'd be real happy to have sold at 20 when it spiked up to 25 uh, within a relatively short period of time. Uh, I'm just not sure that, that the graphs are that proactive that I can use them for very much, but I will report to those of you that are experimenting with these graphs right now that the relative strength for Zhang Ping at the moment is beneath 50, but well above 20, so it looks to be in a reasonable place for a purchase if you look at these kind of, of things. I like to use value line, and here I am with some value line numbers. I also have a manifest uh, line up at the top of this slide, and we've ex been experimenting. Mark's been talking a lot. I've been talking a lot about the, the use of the low projection from value line as a good indication of where a, a well-prepared conservative SSG might end up with, uh, with a total return uh, for the, the stock. And in the most recent value line for Zhang Ping, I'm looking at about a 15% return. That compares to uh, the manifest call, which is about 24%. Usually, you don't see this kind of divergence between the value line number and the manifest number. And when that happens, it indicates to me that I might be looking at a company that has extreme growth, and then there's a lot of opinion about how that growth's going to continue. I like to look at the earnings three to five years from now. Value line claims they're going to be around $4. So I'll store that in my head for just a moment. I also like to look at the average annual PE and value line says that that's going to be around 11 uh, three to five years from now. So I'll store that number in my head. Remember, we're storing $4 in earnings and 11 for an annual PE. Here I am going to the manifest site. Manifest is calling for an average PE of 12. Remember, we had an 11 from value line, so that's interesting that Manifest is slightly more optimistic, You're giving it a slightly higher valuation. And here's that five-year uh, earnings forecast, Manifest at 463 compared to the $4, which was a three- to five-year call from value line. Well, I'll try to pull all those numbers together, and I'll try to come up with an SSG that basically uh, I can live with and that satisfies me. And then if it still gives me the kind of return that I'm looking for, I'm going to be quite happy. Here we are again, Zhang Ping, ticker hogs, uh, debt to capital, a little bit on the high side right here. Uh, I'd want to do some, some serious investigation. I did find out that Zhang Ping uh, uh, likes to uh, build processing plants and a large amount of this debt came from a processing plant that they're bringing online right now. It's only at 40% utilization. Uh, they plan to have it at 90% uh, utilization rate within the next year, and that should be accretive to the bottom line, significantly accretive to the bottom line. As long as they're using their money uh, to build things that are directly related to the business and that are going to help the business, I'm much more comfortable with this debt number than I might be under other circumstances. 
I'm looking at the most recent quarter. I noticed there was a slight drop in earnings, about negative four and a half percent. I read the annual report. I, I came up with a lot of reasons why that might have happened. One reason, which I found kind of compelling, was that pork prices plummeted in the last year and a half with all the talk of the H1N1 virus. Now, when you say H1N1, there doesn't seem to be any reason why that should have any impact on pork. But when the news people talk about H1N1, they call it the swine flu. And when the Chinese people heard about the swine flu, for about a month and a half, uh, last February, January, March, uh, for about a month and a half, pork prices hit new lows as people avoided pork products, thinking that they could get the flu from processed pork. Well, of course, that can't happen. That's not true. And pork prices have begun to rebound. But when pork prices plummet, you have to sell a lot more pork to make the same kind of money that you're used to. I've put in some estimates from the analysts going forward, and then I had to make a call for growth. Uh, this is a medium-sized company, and my call for growth is about 18% going forward. That might seem extremely aggressive to some of you, but as I've said many times as I've talked to you in these webinars, this is my SSG, and I'll expect you to do your SSG and set your own numbers for targets. I'm using 18%, and I'm fairly comfortable with it. Uh, I noticed that the uh, margins have been declining, and I've given you one reason for the decline in margins. Uh, the annual report's pretty uh, instructive, and if you are going to invest in this company, you probably want to read it. There are a number of different reasons why margins have kind of bottomed out at around seven cents and why the company anticipates those margins to increase going forward. I also note that debt to equity, if I strike this uh, number at the beginning of the company's history or publicly traded history, I notice that debt to equity seems to have leveled out at about 20, I'm sorry, return on equity seems to have leveled out at about 21%. I'm pretty happy with that particular number. Uh, I don't expect Zhang Ping to trade at a PE of 902 uh, or at 94, and I'm I'm not very confident about that too there. So I did strike them from my consideration, and then I sat back and I thought about where Value Line said that the average PE should be. Uh, in three to five years, and where Manifest said it should be. Remember, Value Line said around 11, and uh, uh, Manifest said around 12. Well, I'm pretty comfortable with a low PE of five going forward, so I chose five for my low, and then that would mean that 17 would have to be my high if I'm going to get a average PE of around 11. 17 and 5 is 22, divided by 2 gives me 11. So I came up with 17. I'm not too uh, bad with that. I, I feel kind of nice about that. If this company does rebound with hog prices, then it has the potential in my mind to go back to the PEs that it was carrying before the recession and before the decline of hog prices. I did adjust for the most recent four quarters, and lo and behold, I came up with a three to five year par average uh, of around 15%. That matches almost exactly the value line number. I will make the point that on my SSG, I'm only anticipating a number out here in earnings of a little bit less than three and a half dollars. If you remember, Value Line was anticipating four dollars in earnings somewhere in this three to five year area, and Manifest was anticipating four dollars and twenty three cents at the fifth year. So I feel I have a relatively conservative SSG. If I'm going to uh, add real money, my own money to this in my own portfolios, I'm going to take a very small position in this company because if I have money on the table, 
then I will follow this company and I will force myself to learn as much as I can, not only about this particular company, but about investing in China. So my pick for this evening is Zhongpin Incorporated, ticker symbol HOGS.